Welcome back to another video. In this video, I'll be presenting the model that I used to get funded and still use to this day. In this video, I will be breaking down how I built a higher time frame narrative so that my lower time frame executions are high probability. If there are some things in this lecture that seem confusing, be sure to check out the other lectures on my channel so that you have a better grasp of what I will be talking about in this lecture. As always, Make sure to subscribe for upcoming content and all likes are appreciated. Before I begin, I want to give credit where it is due and this will also provide additional resources for you to learn. So without my mentors, I wouldn't be sitting here teaching. So huge shout out to Michael J. Huddleston, which is also known as ICT, the MMXM Trader, Casper SMC, Trader Day, and a personal mentor of mine, Sam. The components of my model stem from time and price. In my opinion, they are equally important as one cannot operate without the other. So for that whole Twitter debate, that's just my stance on it. They're both equally important to me. For time, I look at quarterly theory by day. And for price, I look at three subcomponents. Our time frame narrative, intermediate term time frame market maker model, and lower time frame confirmation. First is higher time frame narrative. And as an ICT trader, you must understand that higher time frame narrative is what makes any entry model high probability. So without that, any entry you take on the lower time frame will most likely be a 50-50 coin flip. Whenever you see me post execution videos or anyone posts execution videos, that is literally the easiest part of trading, pushing the button. If you're a developing trader right now, you have to realize that all the homework is done prior to the trade execution. So whatever you see us post those things or any influencer post those things, they've actually done top-down analysis and made sure that they are in direction of the market. Once the higher time frame narrative is established, we can refer to the intermediate term time frame to further build up context by looking at structure within the higher time frames area of interest. So that would be that intermediate term time frame market maker model. And so lastly is that lower time frame confirmation and that's just your entry model essentially. So let's get started on the model. And the first step I take is developing the higher time frame narrative. In this case, I will just be focusing on the concept from the market maker model trader or the MMXM trader, um, his concept of internal range and external range. And essentially what it is, is just liquidity. It's if price is reaching for liquidity or inefficiency. On our higher time frames, we pay attention to the current dealing range and see whether we are trading from a fair value gap or from a previous level of liquidity. So if price is currently trading into a fair value gap, we can anticipate for price to reach for liquidity next. And if price is currently trading into a high or low, we can anticipate for price to reach for an inefficiency next. So that higher low would be that um, liquidity and that inefficiency would be a fair value gap. Just a quick note is to make sure you watch my lecture on internal and external range liquidity and also time frame alignment just to get a full explanation on majority of things that I will be using in this lecture. In this slide, I have created a diagram of what we want to see when anticipating that price will reach for liquidity. So here we have price inside of a higher time frame for valley gap. And so we can anticipate for price to reach for liquidity being an old high or an old low. To confirm this, we would look on the intermediate term time frame for a market maker model. So here we can see price is trading down into this fair valley gap. So once this happens, we can anticipate um, that we're looking for this old high, which is liquidity. And so we would drop down to our intermediate term time frame to look for that market maker model from this low, this swing low, to become the buy side of the curve into this old high. Vice versa, same thing. Once this trades into this bearish fair value gap, we're dropping down to our intermediate term time frame to look for a market maker model for this high to be that. Um, change uh, the change in state delivery or the smart money reversal. And we're looking for buy side of the curve to sell side of the curve into the old low. Okay, and then in this slide, I have created a diagram of what we want to see when anticipating that price will reach for an inefficiency. So here we have price trading into a previous level of liquidity. 
and once this occurs, we can anticipate for price to trade towards an inefficiency. Once again, to confirm this, we will look on the intermediate term time frame for a market maker model. So here, for example, we took this old high. So then from this swing high, we can drop down to the lower time frame or intermediate term time frame, sorry. And this high would be that um, changes to delivery or that smart money reversal. You're looking for market maker sell model back into this fair rally gap. Um, vice versa, once we take this old low, we're looking for this to be the changes to delivery or the smart money reversal. And we're looking for that market maker buy model back into this fair valley gap right here. The second step is to identify the intermediate term time frame market maker model in context of the higher time frame. So if we just took liquidity on a higher time frame, I am looking for a smart money reversal on the intermediate term time frame to frame a market maker model into the original consolidation or case higher time frame internal range liquidity, which would be that inefficiency. If we are trading inside of a higher time frame inefficiency, then I'm looking for a smart money reversal on the intermediate term time frame to frame a market maker model into the original consolidation or the higher time frame external range liquidity, which would be that old high or old low. Moving forward, now that we have built higher time frame narrative, we can look at step three, which is lower time frame confirmation. In this step, we will blend time with price. And by doing so, we were able to determine high probability liquidity levels as they are time based. So first things first, you will need to annotate the following on your charts. So a vertical line at 6 p.m., midnight, 6 a.m., and 12 p.m. And this is all Eastern Standard Time. The setup we are looking for is to capitalize on a phase of the intermediate term time frame market maker model, a sweep of Time-based liquidity will be the silver bullet setup in terms of the market maker model. But to us on the lower time frame, it will look like the ICT 2022 model. So here is the diagram of the setup. For this model, there will be two setups. The setups are the same, but dependent on which session provides a consolidation. So in this first setup, Asian session consolidates and creates liquidity. We can then look at the high and low of the Asian session as time-based liquidity and wait for a raid. Understanding the daily power of three, that would mean Asian session is accumulation, London session is manipulation, and New York AM session is distribution. You can look for a setup between London and New York session in this case, but for me personally, I usually only trade New York AM session. If Asian session provides a consolidation, then I'm looking for a continuation trade during New York AM session. So here, just to clarify things, we have Asia session. We're looking for that consolidation in setup number one. The high of that range would be time-based liquidity. The low of that range would be time-based liquidity. And so in context of our higher time frame, if we're a market maker buy model, we're looking for manipulation below liquidity, right? And so once London session trades below liquidity, we can look for, or in my case, I usually trade New York AM session. So during New York AM session, I'm looking for a continuation trade into that final target, which would be that original consolidation or the higher time frame drawn liquidity. This is the same thing, but inverted to show what it would look like in a bearish scenario, right? So we have time-based liquidity raid on the time-based liquidity high during this distribution phase of this market maker model. Now I'm looking for continuation trade lower during New York AM session. The second setup is the same thing, but this time London session offers the consolidation. When this occurs, we can look for opportunities during New York AM and New York PM session. During New York AM, I'm looking for a turtle soup or a reversal trade. And then during New York PM, I am looking for a continuation trade into the final target. So basically the same thing, but we just shifted the sessions over one where London provides that consolidation, New York AM, we get that manipulation lower past this time-based liquidity, right? So from here, we look for our lower time frame confirmation to enter on the market, look for that reversal during New York AM, and then New York PM looking for that continuation trade higher. And so once again, this is setup number two, but inverted to show what a bearish scenario would look like. 
And what usually confirms an entry for me is either a balanced price range after time-based liquidity has been rated, or I could wait for that market structure shift, would, would, which would offer that ICT 2022 mentorship model. So right here, we trade above the time-based liquidity within this market maker sell model. We're expecting this trade above this consolidation to be manipulation, right? And so we're looking for our sell opportunities up here during New York AM session, New, during New York PM session, we're looking for a continuation into that final target. So if we got a BPR up here, that's where I would pull the trigger. And then we get this market structure shift here and then trade back into a fair value gap. Then that would be pull the trigger as well. So now that you know what the complete model looks like, I will show you some annotated examples to put it all together. In this first segment, I will be showing an example of when the higher time frame is trading from an inefficiency to liquidity. Before I begin, I just wanted to state that I've chosen the examples I did because I called these live publicly, meaning that doubters can't say I didn't see this in real time. In this example, we are taking a look at NQ on the weekly chart. During this time, I saw the liquidity level from IPTA 60 was purged which is significant because it's time-based liquidity. So this would be time-based liquidity. And so we can expect to see either support or resistance from this level. So we can see that once we took IPTA 60 right here, trade back into it, we're finding support from it. And so we can look at this inefficiency to support price higher into that July high that I was looking for a long time. Um, so yeah, that was my final target here. So with that in mind, I had my eye on the inefficiency resting below it and waited until price traded into it. Once price had traded into the weekly inefficiency, I immediately dropped down to my intermediate term time frame to look for a market maker buy model into the July highs annotated here as draw on liquidity. So dropping down to the four hour chart as that is the time frame alignment of the weekly chart, right? So do you see the market maker model here? I've annotated the SMT divergence at the lows to make it a little easier. And uh, please pause the video here and try to spot it before I go to the next slide. Okay, now I will review the annotations. So here are the annotations. So we can see here that we have the original consolidation, the distribution, the smart money reversal, and this is where you're going to be wanting to look for your SMT divergence. And then after that, we have that accumulation phase that we are looking to trade. You could trade the low risk buy or low risk sell, but for now, we're just going to focus on the accumulation or distribution phase. So now that I have identified this, we can drop down to the lower time frame and look for one of the two possible setups. Continuing with time frame alignment, I'm dropping down to the 15 minute chart now. The vertical lines here depict the quarters of the day. So on this day, we had NFP, so it's a special case, but the concept of the setup remains the same. I'm waiting for a sweep of time based liquidity before looking for any entry opportunities and Remember, because our higher time frame context is bullish, we stay true to that narrative and we can look at any manipulation below lows as opportunities to get into the market long. So removing the accumulation box and adding the lower time frame annotations, we can see that in context of our narrative, we are provided a buy setup. During NFP, we manipulated a lower into a four hour fair value gap, then created a massive rejection block. Although because this model doesn't utilize the rejection block, if you understand it, then you can use it as confluence. If you don't know what a rejection blocks are, then don't worry about it. Here we are presented with a balanced price range and a market structure shift. Both of these are confirmations that you could enter into the market. So right here, we have this balanced price range, this market structure shift you could have entered on this candle close just for simplicity's sake. So if you targeted the original consolidation, it would have provided a 2.13 R trade from that candle closure. If you were aiming for that first target, original consolidation, 
Then the second target right here would have provided a 2.7R trade into that final draw on liquidity, the higher time frame draw on liquidity. In the case that this was too low risk to reward for you, then there was also another opportunity on the following day. So once again, annotating the sessions with vertical lines and waiting for a manipulation below these lows to offer higher prices in context of the higher time frame. So here we get the manipulation below time-based liquidity, which would be that Asian session low and that London session low. We trade below it just a little bit, and then we start to get displacement higher to create that market structure shift. And right here is where you'll find that ICT 2022 model. Now, if you're looking at this, you might not like this initial push higher where we just wicked above this high. So it doesn't really convince us that it's a market structure shift. So you could have waited for this candle closure. There's another fair rally gap right here that you could have entered on. That would also be the ICT 2022 model. The first target on the original consolidation would have provided a 5.38 R trade. And then the second target of the higher time frame drawn liquidity would have provided a 7.38 R trade. So once again, this is obviously you don't have to target such a hard, like such a high risk to reward trade. You can always just target that 2R and just be satisfied with that because 2R is more than enough. And then here is the second setup annotated on the intermediate term time frame just to give you perspective what we're looking at, right? So during this accumulation phase, you were given two opportunities to buy, one during NFP and then second one during Monday for that continuation run higher. Okay. So now I will be showing an example of when the higher time frame is trading from liquidity to an inefficiency. The concept is the same, but now you're just looking for a market maker model pointing towards a higher time frame inefficiency. To keep things relevant, Here's an example I annotated in live time publicly um, showing external range to internal range liquidity. So on the daily chart, we can see that during the final week of February, a massive inefficiency had been left in the market. And so I was looking for this to be the drawn liquidity since an old high had just been purged. Dropping down to the hourly chart as that is the time frame alignment of the daily chart, right? So do you see the market maker model here? I've annotated the SMT divergence at the highs to make it a little easier. So please pause the video here and try to spot it before I go into the next slide. Okay, now, so I will reveal the annotations. So here are the annotations and we can see here that we have this exact same thing as before. The only thing that changes is where the higher time frame is currently trading. Origin consolidation over here, accumulation, smart money reversal, where you're going to be looking for your SMT divergence. Then you have your distribution. Here you could have taken the low risk sell once again, but we're just going to focus on this distribution phase right here because this will be probably the easiest setup in all of the market maker model. So now that we have identified this, we can drop down to the lower time frame and look for one of the two possible setups. Continuing with time frame alignment, I am dropping down to the five minute chart. The vertical lines here depict the quarters of the day. So those vertical lines at 6 p.m., midnight, 6 a.m., 12 p.m., right? On this day, we had CPI, so it's another special case, but the concept of the setup stays the same. So I am waiting for a sweep of time-based liquidity before looking for any entries. Remember, because our higher time frame context is bearish, we stay true to that narrative and look for any manipulation above highs as opportunities to get into the market. So just removing the distribution box just to make things a little cleaner, we can see that in context of our narrative, we are provided a sell setup. First things first is to determine what kind of setup we can anticipate for. And in this case, we have Asian session consolidation, meaning London session manipulation. And finally, we are looking for New York AM session as a distribution towards the higher time frame drawn liquidity. So 
here we have Asia high that time based liquidity London manipulates out these highs right and then we start trading lower lower um, in this case just because it's CPI I wouldn't really be looking for a trade here although you could have like th this was a very obvious short but still like for CPI like you don't want to trade high impact news like that just in case you are wrong so I would just wait for CPI to play out first and then this displacement is already very telling that we're obviously going lower to that higher time frame draw during CPI price displaced lower but did not tap into the drawn liquidity which is why we can continue to look for a setup so if this CPI displacement lower tapped into the strong liquidity already I would not be looking for the setup anymore but because we only touch the volume imbalance on the daily and we haven't taken that original consolidation low we can anticipate that this right here we can find a silver bullet setup within this um, CPI gap within the CPI gap this was also an hourly fair value gap so in this context it is the higher time frame relative to the five minute chart so we can apply the concept the exact same way and what can we find the exact same thing right so higher time frame pd array smt divergence lower time frame structure which would be that market maker model so here you're provided a bunch of entry opportunities but the main ones i'm looking at is right here we have that low risk sell i just annotate this whole thing as distribution because you could enter throughout this whole thing but right here you have your low risk sell distribution redistribution right so if you took that low risk sell on this breaker block right here um then you would have caught 170 points and then if you decide to enter on this unicorn model right here then you would have caught 140 points and then if you decide to trade the silver bullet right here on the lower time frame then that would have been 90 points right there all the way to that original consolidation low so here are the different entries you could have taken and after this smt divergence you get a breaker entry right here that you could have entered on it provided a 170 point setup after that is the unicorn setup right here right with a high low higher high lower low breaker block fair value gap unicorn model 140 points and then that silver bullet right here that you could have taken for 90 points to this original consolidation low once again the most important part of any model is the higher time frame narrative and without higher time frame narrative your entry models will end up being a coin flip i'm telling you this because i've been there where i just constantly try to learn lower time frame entry models and stuff like that and you can see how once you have that context you can find whatever entry model you need to find in here right right here that smt you end up getting that icd 2022 model for example or right here you get that unicorn model or right here you get that silver bullet it's everything you just need context and that's the most important thing so if there's anything you take away from this video it's develop your skill to build that higher time frame context and narrative and so that brings me to the conclusion of this lecture covering the model that got me funded with over 400k currently i'm sitting at around 750k funding and so i hope you all found this insightful and if you have any questions feel free to ask me as always have a great day and subscribe for more in the future